Welcome to Conversations with Cheryl Weston. And today we have a very distinguished guest. Uh, we will be having our interview with uh, perhaps the next Nebraska Senator, um, hopefully. So at this moment, let's bring in our, our distinguished guest, there he is, Mr. Preston Love Jr., perhaps the next gentleman in order to represent Nebraska in the Senate of the United States government. Welcome to the program, Preston. How are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. Sure, I'm ripping and running. <laughs> when they say running for an office, what they really mean is just the running part. <laughs> Oh, you're no pro at this. You can handle it. <laughs> we know that. We know that. So we wanted to, as I um, said to our welcoming, where this is our distinguished guest today. I said that twice. Um, who is running for um, the Senate seat to replace the current uh, Senator Pete Ricketts. Um, so Preston, what made you decide to want to run? Well, I was asked to run. Okay. Um, you may remember in 2020, mm -hmm. and by the way, I cannot believe 2020 <laughs> years ago, <laughs> you know, right around. But 2020, uh -huh. I was asked to just uh, be a placeholder, not really run for the office, mm -hmm. but just give Democrats around the state something to do <laughs> on election day. Uh, in there. And so I agreed to do it. And with all the details I won't go through, the only way to do it was the, to um, do it by write-in. Mm -hmm. And it shows that I did run as a write-in candidate. I had people in North Omaha who went to the ballot to vote for me, and they couldn't find my name on the <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> About the write -in. Uh, every record in the history of Nebraska, uh -huh. um, 60,000 votes, give or take a few. And I think the highest ever by any candidate ever running right in was 16,000. Wow. 60,000. Yeah. I just use that as a kind of a, uh, a point of reference. But so I, that was it. I had fun. I, I had about four months to run a campaign. I spent $3,500. <laughs> $3,500. Whoa, that was really expensive. Yeah, it was. And there was <laughs> but I, uh, so, you know, it was, it was that. So mm -hmm. we get to 2024. Mm-hmm. The Democratic Party came to me on a serious note and asked, would I be interested in running? And I took pause. It had nothing to do with 2020 in a mm -hmm. funny But uh, I took pause, and my immediate reaction is, are you kidding me? And, <laughs> then, and, think about it, and that's going to be the answer to my your question. Uh -huh. Uh and before I go too far, I surely want to thank you for having me on. Oh, you know you're a guest here. You're welcome anytime. Yeah. Well, is that right? Well, we, yes. <laughs> but I feel that we are really friends. We've been through the our ups and downs. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of respect for the work that you've done, but now you're really, really serving in a lot of different ways. So I, I consider it... Uh, uh, a personal honor to be on the show. Thank uh, you. I think that you waste your time with people <laughs> in Bollywood. That's why I consider it to be an honor. <laughs> but so I thought about a number of things, and if we get into it, I'll tell you what those were. But the bottom line is it occurred to me if I run, mm -hmm. probably we'll have a very positive effect on the black folks getting out to vote. Forget about me winning or losing. 
just if I can do that, that would be a victory in itself. Mm -hmm. And so my decision to say yes, Cheryl, was simply that. If I could get my community to quit not going to the polls and to get inspired by anything, but maybe from homeboy, you know, <laughs> run for Senate, that they would come out. After all, what a great candidate. Wait a minute, sir. You're right. <laughs> Are you the one running for Senate? Yeah. Didn't I see you in Bakers buying some chitlins? Yeah. <laughs> Damn hocks. You know, one of one of the one of the community. Yeah. And you know, one who has served. And so I think, and I'm I I'm gonna postscript this in a minute, but I thought that maybe this would be worth doing mm -hmm. to sacrifice myself in a way, because if we can get the vote out. Oh, there's some victories that are there. There are the, let me just go over a couple of them. If we get the vote out, mm -hmm. we will, one, probably help to elect a congressman. Very much so. For Senate, but I will elect the, <laughs> how's that for math? I probably will have a big effect on electing a congressman. If we get the vote out, we will probably help the Democrat against Trump with mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the split electoral vote. If I get the vote out, we will probably be able to show ourselves and show Nebraska that we are a voting power to be reckoned with mm -hmm. because we haven't done that, Cheryl. And we need to break that cycle. So those were my choices. Now, that was then. I, If we have time, I got an update on that. Uh, but that was my reason for running. I'll take the heat uh, and I'll run. And with all the rigors of running for office for real, which is what we're doing, uh, there's a lot to it. But if I could have those results, I would have a victory that I could be proud of for the rest of my few days. And so that was then, Cheryl, and I'm setting you up to ask me, well, what, what you I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it in my way. Um, it's, uh, I think those are great. But also, I think you may have a more of an effect than you realize. And so... I think if I go on to that, that'll take away from your what you would like to say. But um, I I do agree that it is there's a strong possibility if people will get out as long as we could get the block out that just doesn't, um, you know, they don't say anything. They don't vote. Well, I shouldn't say they don't say they talk a lot, but don't get up and have action. So perhaps knowing that you are running and then also some people may surprise you who will get out and vote for other reasons, which I will let you go ahead now and expound upon why that, what's the update? Why are you running now? Yeah. Well, you, you <laughs> unfortunately uh, took all of my thunder. But <laughs> well, you know, not quite. <laughs> yeah, you know, my community will vote for me because I'm from the community and I'm black, but we don't want to make a mistake on that. Mm -hmm. uh, if I all of a sudden turned into Clarence Thomas from my community, <laughs> no way. So our community is smarter than that. Uh -huh. They're not going to vote because you're black anymore. That no. was, uh, there was a time yes. where we would just close our eyes if he's black, he's all right. Yeah. And so that's no longer so I I I don't take that kind of for granted that the oh he's he's black. He going we no, I know better than that. Mm -hmm. But we you know, and I'll just toot my horn, I have served this community for lately, twenty years. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why they will vote for me, because I'm black and that. Uh and I build up. It took. It takes a while in our community. I build up 
a long-term credibility with the community. And not only that, uh, I'm, you know, nobody, they, there's the next level of uh, being specific. Well, how do you feel about this? And how do you feel about that? And I think that I'm comfortable knowing that the community will agree that I'm, you know, in their corner. I don't have to prove that to them uh, as a new can a new person or a new face. So that, but but here's what, here's the update that I'm going to surprise you with because you thought I was going one place, but I'm going another. I, I know the surprise, but I'm not going to tell. <laughs> Go oh. ahead. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So what about this this race? First of all, a quick point of education. I do this all day long. People come to me, Cheryl, uh -huh. and they say, well, who are you running against? You're not running against Terrell, are you? Uh -huh. Or Justin, are you? You know, uh, you know they're, they're mixing up the state Senate uh -huh. with the United States Senate. So that's uh -huh. the first thing. We've got to educate people about all of these things that we know, but others don't automatically calculate that, that simplicity. Then they say, oh, okay, but you're running against Vargas. Okay, I understand now. <laughs> uh, because, you know, it's federal. But here's my point, is I'm running statewide. Mm -hmm. And that is what should give people pause. Because what does that usually mean? Our knee-jerk reaction to that is, out in greater Nebraska, out west, you can forget it. Mm -hmm. What I have felt for years, but I got some news. I got breaking news that in 2020, uh, I don't know if you've heard me tell this story, Cheryl, but in 2020, I wrote uh, a editorial for the World Herald. And I said that, Let's plant a seed. Let's plant a seed. And the article was about rural and urban Nebraska working closer together because we've got a lot of stuff in common. And that uh, spawned a, a whole response from a lot of people out in western Nebraska and, and over those four years. It just had nothing to do with running for office. It's just that I thought we could bridge some gaps. And we have, mm -hmm. uh, and I've taken uh, bus loads uh, separately, separate. I don't mean multiple buses, but uh, but bus from time to time out west, stayed all night in places like Imperial, Nebraska, Okalala, Nebraska, and uh, McCook, and they have come here and spent the night and come to Juneteenth. <laughs> And some of our stuff, we learned, we've met some people, they've met us, they've learned a lot about our culture, and we've learned a lot about theirs. And guess what? Some of them are Republican. But we never talked about being a Democrat or a Republican. We just got to talking. Uh, I learned some stuff about farming and cat, cattle ranching that had nothing to do with that kind of stuff. And we didn't, they, they, their, their, their reaction to me as a Black person was, Pretty much, they don't know nothing, but they don't. They're not carrying this anti-black uh, cross that I thought they were. They just trying to get by on their own. They have biases because they have no education. Those biases uh, go quicker than I thought, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. But here's my point on all of that, and and let me make sure that I am clear about this. It's not a hundred percent out there. I'm just saying there is a, a percentage out there that are willing to evaluate me for real and vote for me. Some of the, the Democrats, that's easy, but the independents is a little easier. It's tough, uh, not easier, but it's a little tougher. But uh, Republicans, it's hard, but they there's pushback on the Republican leadership and some of their policy that have nothing to do with me. And so if I'm palatable to them, 
then they're going to vote for me. And so there is a path. That's my new, that's my update. There's a path that possibly we could win this. I'm a long shot. Don't let me trip. I ain't tripping, <laughs> but uh, there's more to it than meets the eye. I was, I'm saying that uh, I agree with you on that is that um, it has become this election is really not so much about whatever your race is. It is looking at the individual. And I will agree that it is, um, you know, in there that it it's uh, people are looking at, because as you said, uh, they're not happy with what's going on right now. They're not happy with the Congress or the Senate. They're not happy. And therefore, they're wanting to make a change. And if it means biting the bullet and looking to see who you are, then they're willing to do that. And um, I think that that makes a big difference yeah. um, it, from what it was. Yeah. And you're, I think you're... you you've got a there's a very good chance because um, people, like I said, they're not looking so much at the you as what are the alternatives they're not looking at your party they're not looking at the race they're looking yeah. at you know we need a change because of the way the world the country is and we want to do that um i'm going to get into I, I, before you go there okay i just want to say you're absolutely right and i usually uh, am <laughs> well, let me say it another way finally you're absolutely <laughs> right uh, uh, and you're right. I just want to add to you what you said. Uh -huh. A lot of the support that I'm getting out yeah. state is not for me. Yeah, it's not because of my wonderful self. They don't <laughs> like. They don't like my opposition. They don't like the fighting within their own party. They right. don't like the division. They and they're looking for solutions. They. Don't, it's almost like who cares what now. I don't want to make that sound as simple as I'm making it sound, but in some cases it is. There's a, they're not willing to vote in the abstract for somebody. Mm -hmm. That's why next week I'm going to go out, Cheryl, and we're going to circle the state for the week. We're going to go to 20 cities uh, for about a thousand miles. And we're going to go and listen and talk out there all in Nebraska. And when we come back, I can assure you, I'll have a great report about the reception we're getting. I'll give you one example, and then we can go to what you say uh, here. But the um, we went to Wahoo, Nebraska here uh, about two weeks ago. And I got a standing ovation before I had anything to say, and most of them were Republicans. I didn't, figure, I didn't anticipate that, mm -hmm. but that's... That's what's going on out there because of the complexity and the people are unhappy about the way the things are. Right. Go ahead. I could tell you about Wahoo, Nebraska. That used to be my territory in my corporate days was Wahoo was one of the places that I uh, was on my my territory. So, well, I brought up on the screen because I wanted to share um Folks, let people know where they can go for Preston Love's uh, website. And yes. um, I I, I want to know how long did it take him to take that picture of you posing? Like, uh, I'm like, is this Preston Love or is that his stand in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a that's a, not a uh, that's not photoshopped either. Okay, okay. I'll tell, took, I'll tell you who the photographer is. Okay. It's Jason Fisher. Okay. And he's <laughs> a lot of us, you know, he's a brother man. Uh -huh. He took, we, I asked, this is, uh, this, this series of pictures uh, was taken before the campaign. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, they, they might, some of the recent ones we took for the campaign, you might see. But this one, was uh -huh. we were up. And if I may say so, it was so cold. <laughs> <laughs> and we were up on the roof, and you see the Whitman building over there, and the wind was blowing. Man, I'll tell you uh, <laughs> yeah, that this is the real deal here. <laughs> but, uh, 
Yeah, I yeah, I, I was standing there like and when when they said, Okay, we got this, I said, Okay, and I ran inside. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I'm going to ask you a couple of things here. Yeah. Um, your 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 Logan, your tag is vote or love for Senate.com. And I think that's a good one due to the fact that keep it simple. Yeah. I don't believe in that. Keep it simple, stupid. Uh, but I believe in if you keep it simple and get to the point, um, you find more people are going to say, wow, OK, let me check that out. But I liked where you, uh, Preston Love Jr., this distinguished thought leader in civil activism, history, economic development, known for his dedication to fostering economic inclusion and community engagement. Good tag. Okay, now how much did you pay someone to write that about you? <laughs> <laughs> well, believe it or not, uh, when you run for the Senate, you do pay people to write. Let me tell you, I'm going to tell you something, though. That's going to be hard for you, Preston, to stay direct and short. Watch, watch and out. Sussy. So uh, <laughs> I, we, I did. But let me tell you, we're different candidates. Uh -huh. I ex would accept nothing from what somebody wrote unless mm -hmm. it really uh, made me feel comfortable that we weren't making stuff up or uh -huh. trying to be cute. I thought I heard something. Uh, uh, and so we I did pay him to write it, but I sure paid myself to edit it and uh -huh. say, you know, you know, you go through this stuff and you make sure that it makes sense to me. Uh, well, you can get handled and all of this stuff. Is, it, it, they, the campaign takes off without you, Cheryl. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've been there, yeah. done that. But yeah. I want to look at some of your issues Okay. Um, and I think they are what people are looking for, and particularly different segments of people. And yeah. um, is healthcare, you know, they're fighting and still um, one in the Senate, and um, their candidates are saying we've got a plan. We're going to we're go we want to kill affordable health care, and um, still saying it. They're still saying it in thirteen years. And when you ask, well, what is your plan? Well, yeah. we're, we'll have that plan. We're working on it. And before I go any further, though, I really appreciate you saying universal access to affordable health care because I resent when they come and say Obamacare because yeah. that's yeah, so they're trying to put it back. So I, I think that's a wise and I appreciate that. Then you want to strengthen and expand Medicaid, invest in rural health care infrastructure, which well, is can very I go big back to thing. expanding Medicaid? Right. Uh, my opponent uh, in the general election, of course, I've got to win the primary, but my opponent in the general was not only didn't want to expand it, uh, but he wouldn't accept it for two, more than two years for Nebraska mm -hmm. and finally agreed to it. They dragged their feet. And so- And took I'm, about four more years to really put it into action. Right. And so- well, when we get on the debate stage, I'm going to do some whipping on that one. But so, yeah. And I think mm -hmm. investing in, in sure. rural health care. I want to say this uh -huh. real quick. Is one of the other benefits of me running for this office uh, for all of us is that I will be able to articulate some of this stuff that would never even get discussed mm -hmm. if I run. You know, win or lose, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to talk about why didn't we expand Medicaid? Because I'm gonna be there on the stage. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that my community understands the value of all of that. Uh, because well, I don't we, think it's just going to be. Uh, and we want to clarify when you say your community, you're meaning everyone you're running for, correct? And not yeah, just uh, isolate. Yeah. Your and community I, is your in home. The book that we've been saying it on the campus is all in Nebraska. Not all just. right, right. So that's all yeah. your community. Yeah. Um, because you know how people can say, "Oh, he just <clears throat> yeah, wants his just, community." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I looked at um, I like those ideals. How do you see where you can be able to do more for investing in rural healthcare infrastructure because it's in a bad shape. 
all the way around. I hear times and times, and I read a lot of the articles that come up, um, and uh, healthcare is in a bad situation in a lot of our rural areas. And, you know, they say, well, how can that be? And I think that's because people are looking at, they're thinking of the rural area to being those who are ranchers. And those that's a select pool of those big time ranchers who have a lot of funds and don't have to worry and well, all of that. But the rule in, in uh, Nebraska, and as I said, that you know, rural Nebraska was part of my area. Um, everybody's not millionaire or billionaire or big time rancher. So I think that's important. How do you see, what can you do you think would be the ways to invest in rural healthcare infrastructure? Well, that's a very good question. And the, the bottom line for us in Nebraska mm -hmm. is to have your Senator to even focus on it, to even care about mm -hmm. it. Our, one of the little taglines that we use is people over privilege. And we've That's great. Got, uh, a lot of the stuff that doesn't get attention in Nebraska is mm -hmm. because privilege are ruling. We have one party rule and a lot of that party is privileged and they're not worrying about these kinds of issues. And so what I, I don't have any magic pill, you know, mm -hmm. or button to push, but I do know that I will be an advocate and pushing for it uh, because we have it in all different segments. We got it right here in North Omaha, but they got it also in McCook. <laughs> and so Definitely. It's, a, it's a question of folk, focus and advocacy, Cheryl. Okay. Let me ask you about, and I've got here upon the screen for folks to see your issues regarding um, agriculture. Well, again, I've learned I, I got to admit that this has not been one of my burning issues since I was 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but I have just learned from getting to know folks out there about, mm -hmm. uh, and we are an agricultural state, but that doesn't mean anything. If you stay in, you could be in Omaha or Lincoln or some of the largest cities and never even understand any any of this. Mm -hmm. But over time, I have learned that the issues are out there. And I want to say one of the big ones is there's a five-year bill called the Farm Bill, and it has a lot of components. One of them is related to the stuff that happens in the farm uh, ends up uh, in uh, in our communities through the nutri nutritional program. And that Farm Bill is stalled because of the politics they mm -hmm. for you're supposed to be every five years they enhance it or change it and there's a lot of desire out there to get that get that done but the all of these issues uh let me just pick one uh the there there well you raised an issue that is very important you have you've got if, if to make it simple uh you've got two elements out there you have the farmers who are farming their soil to produce products. And you have the ranchers, which are raising uh, some pigs or cattle or whatever. And so you have those two different issues, but both of them can suffer from uh, irresponsible farming and irresponsible ranching. Let me tell you what I mean by that. What you could do is you can go and farm your land and and make some money be, this year. And who cares what you've done to, to conserve the soil in a way that you can do it for lots of years. You don't ruin the soil. Mm -hmm. I've learned that. That's something I, and so that conservation of that is a choice by farmers, but we find that family farmers tend to be very sensitive to that and very attentive. Mm -hmm. Corporate have a tendency to who cares? Let me get this profit. And so 
the corporate farm and corporate ranches, if you will. That's the big guy with a lot of money that you mentioned. Right. Uh, we, we've got to keep a bridle on. And Very much so. Uh, yeah. I think the other two, and I, and I really do think um, you have done a very good job in um, outlining your issues. Um, and you're talking about protecting voting rights because a lot of that is uh, has happened recently. And it was in the Senate where um, they're trying to get rid of the voting rights. And that's right here, even in Nebraska, right in Omaha, our Nebraska local is, uh, you know, up in our legislature. It seems like how many laws are, were they trying to get passed in order to restrict voting, to make it more complicated to, you know, vote? And and what gets me is that um, the Constitution and, as they always like to say, our forefathers, they wanted to make this easy to vote. That's the whole part of becoming, you know, of, of, the, yeah. of the war and so forth, is to make it better and easier for people to vote. Well, we've the one big piece of meat that's embedded in that, uh, if we can get uh, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act passed. Mm -hmm. and just a little background for your your viewers is we had a, a very strong voting rights bill in the 1965 voting right. rights. Bill. It had teeth. It had all kinds of pieces that would prevent. Uh, some of the nonsense that's going on now. That was in 1965. And the result of that was that people of color were able to vote, register and vote. And they did register and vote like crazy. And as a result, we began to win all kinds of elections from, from, uh, hold on one second. A lot of, do you get that background noise? I did. I was just going to tell you if you cut that. I think you just closed up a few background things. noise, please. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if my wife is in there making a cake, <laughs> background noise, more background noise. But yeah, uh, and so uh, we we elected lots. We had a a, a almost straight up spike of black elected officials. And that's all of that from 65. We had, we started electing black mayors and governors and house of representatives and senators, a few. But my point is it was a success. And so too much of a success brings out the enemy. They came back, pushed back. And by 2013, they had disheveled and taken all the teeth and guts out of that. And that is what we're trying to get back because that had, uh, you had the Justice Department and the power of subpoena and all of that to stop all of this nonsense. That's what I'm talking about there, getting back to that. I want to mention, I know we're going there, but I want to just lead with, I straight up, uh, without reservation, I am strong believer of a woman's right to choose about our own reproductive health. And uh, and guess why, Cheryl? I'm not even gonna have to guess. I'm gonna let you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> because it is a woman's rights. Thank it's you. <laughs> to make those decisions. Yeah. And it's really nonsensical that we've got, we even have to discuss that. But I surely am making myself clear on that, so. I, I, you know what? I was getting, I go back to sometimes we, we can make things be so difficult in if we would just keep it simple and to the point. And by what you said, you say, I stand by it. So we don't have to worry about, okay, um, he said this, but he didn't really say it strong. And we're kind of lean. In. Yeah. You've made it a point, And I think it's great because I think people are showing, and that's the reason why it's going to be different. Um, I don't see you running just as a black man. I see you running as a candidate for an office where Nebraska needs change. 
the country needs change and the people are that's what they want is they need change yeah yeah um, add this real quick cheryl the a couple of things that are not on the website yet we'll be putting things but i'm surely against assault weapons uh and some of the red flags things we're talking about so mm -hmm. You know, without developing that, I surely against. I am also an advocate of uh, climate change, and you and I have worked together on uh, here together uh, as it relates to toxic air and all, and ground and all that. So the I, the full list is not up there, but there's many other things that I feel strongly about. Uh, but I wanted to mention those two for sure. Okay. I, I really, there's three, and that is that. I will be a strong advocate for trying to turn around the disparities that mm -hmm. you, in all communities, these disparities, they're different for black communities than they are in rural, but disparities they are. And they are disparities in education, in healthcare delivery, mm -hmm. health, disparities in, uh, I said education, but this disparities uh, in incarceration strategy and all of that, you know, mass incarceration, all of those disparities need attention. Uh, and in Nebraska, we don't get attention to any of these. You know, just, I'll give you one example and then we can go, and I thank you for for, <laughs> for programming my time, but <laughs> I, I do thank you. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I think about this most recent uh, spot with the governor where he, no, no, he, he's not going to fund $18 million to help feed kids uh, during the summer with the EBT program. And it was so nonsensical that even he refused, backed up. <laughs> well, but, you know, that comes from his predecessor um, yeah. was both of them came out and said, we don't want to have a welfare state. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, it's like, no, I guess being multi-billionaires, you wouldn't want a welfare, but who makes everything for you in order for you to be, a, uh, you know, a uh, millionaire and a billionaire. But um, before you know, our time ran out here, I wanted to make sure people know you're getting ready to, uh, I think, do you have any other um, apps open? Because I'm getting a little feedback there from. Oh, I don't know what what kind of feedback. Now I'm okay. 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 Um, I wanted to let everyone know where your headquarters is coming. You're making this big announcement. So we wanted to get this out. Well, let me say it another way, Cheryl. Miss Weston, <laughs> I'm making a big statement with my headquarters. And that is I'm not going to run somewhere and try to be something I'm not. I'm from North Omaha and I affirm my community and I want them to be proud that they've got somebody running for United States Senate. So I'm putting my headquarters right in the middle of the community at right. 20 grand. That's 20. That's the old Jesse's. Okay. And so I'm doing that purposely. And, uh, but we're having a, opening of that office on the 9th, Saturday the 9th, you see it, mm -hmm. 2311 is the old Jesse's. And uh, uh, we're excited to be in the community, showing the community that uh, we're here and we're proud to be here and proud to be from here. And then we're asking people, come on, because we need your help. Come by, volunteer for 15 minutes or an hour. Make some phone calls. Go knock on door. We'll all be we'll be right there operating out of that. And we would hope that you come join us on the night at two o'clock. Thank you for for bringing that up, Cheryl. All right. Well, I'm going to we're just about out of time because I like to always give my host um, the last few minutes and closing remarks. Um, I, I said my host, I meant to say my guest, the last few minutes, um, if there's something you'd like to leave us with. Well, I don't really want to leave the uh, this with the community uh, realizing uh, that this is about all of us and don't see this as me running for office. This is all of us uh, making a statement and all of us. We need to 
to take the opportunity right now to try to break this cycle of one party rule and break the cycle of nobody paying attention to the stuff that we need in our community. And so I'm hoping you see the bigger picture here and get out and vote and come volunteer, give money, whatever. We, we're running a serious race to become a uh, senator. And so come on out on the ninth and we'll get you going. Love, love, love this uh, conversation that we had, Cheryl. Well, as I said before, and I honestly meant it, and um, you're always welcome to come back and hopefully let us know how your trip went. You said mm -hmm. you're going for a week. So maybe when you get back, you can come on and, you know, tell us what kind of reaction you got. I have a thousand <laughs> stories. All I'll right. That sounds <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a plan. Thank you. And, uh, you know, we wish you the very best, very mm -hmm. best. And I always say, you know, um, I look at it like when you, the only, or how should I say it? You win because you ran. That's a win right there. But you're winning for the end, which is that seat. And always think of it, you can get that seat. So I'm, we're, we're wishing you the best and I think things will be in, uh, I look at it that way. So we'll look for the next time you'll be on, and that's Preston Love. Again, let's reiterate, March 9th will be his grand opening, 2 o'clock p.m. at the Old Jesse's uh, on North 24th Street. Have a great day. You can join us here. Thank you. I'm going to try. Yeah.